This nugget is focused on Scrum process improvements, how to get better. And as we already discussed in the Scrum rituals themselves, the Scrum retrospective is the key to how to get better. But how to improve with Scrum? To me, the very first statement is there are very few rules, which means there's lots of room for innovation. And I deliberately picked innovation as opposed to improvements, but innovations are obviously focused on improvements. The reason, again, I specifically picked on innovations is it allows us to adopt, to adjust, to expand on the few rules that are in Scrum to allow us to introduce improvements for our organization. So the fact that there are a few rules gives us a chance to absolutely make Scrum a very specific focused practice for our organization. Other suggestions for Scrum process improvements, do it incrementally. Do one or two Scrum processes, do one or two agile processes, get really good at that, and then apply the next. Again, recognizing there are very few rules that we can be Scrum with a minimal or we can be Scrum with a full bore implementation. I would suggest not only do we want to do our standard sprint retrospectives, on a regular basis we need to do organizational retrospectives so that we can identify where the room for innovations are going to be. Key to broadcasting, to communicating, to ensuring that the organization is aware of our Scrum successes and understanding where we need to focus our process improvements, measure the results so we can understand our quality is improving, our time to market is improving, or our particular organization has improved on the quality, but our time to market is not following the standard expectations for a Scrum environment. So that would again allow us to focus where we need to do our process improvement. And as we get better and better, I would say we need to continually challenge our team to try new agile techniques. And to me, the key for Scrum process improvement is recognizing that there are very few rules. And as long as we adhere to the basics of the Scrum rituals, the daily Scrum, the Scrum retrospective, the sprint planning session, as long as we ensure that we're following the principles of the artifacts, that we have story cards, that we have product backlog, and that we are applying at least some agile principles for iterative development. We are Scrum, but because Scrum is very non-prescriptive, how you apply Scrum is very much project and organizational specific, which as I said, gives us lots of room for innovation. Do we want to have our daily scrums in the morning or the afternoon? And that may seem like a very simplistic process improvement, but if the team is happier, if having the scrum in the afternoon better supports your team work environment, we're still very much consistent with the concept of a scrum ritual, which is a daily scrum. Doesn't have to be at 9 a.m. or 3 p.m. scrum is just as effective. We have our artifacts. Steve likes his story cards on index cards. Maybe you prefer to use post-it notes. Maybe you prefer to use automated tools. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe you. So again, as long as we are adhering to the principles of the very few rules that mean we're scrum focused and that we're following some basic principles of agile development for iterative development, we are scrum. But scrum, as often said, takes 10 minutes to understand and years to master. And the reason Scrum takes 10 minutes to understand, or, or maybe make it a little more than 10 minutes, Scrum takes the amount of time it takes to review this entire Nugget series to understand, so a few hours, but Scrum takes years to master. 
is because there's so much room for innovation. There's so much room to make Scrum project and organizational specific. As an experienced organization using Scrum, we want to continually challenge our team and our organization to do process improvement on a continual basis. And we've already talked at length about the sprint retrospective, but the sprint retrospective is your key process improvement activity in Scrum. We do it after every sprint. And as I discussed, when we are reviewing the ritual for the Scrum retrospective, the key is keep doing it. Don't let management, don't let the product owner, don't let your own intuition say, you know what? We've been doing these sprint retrospectives for the last six months. This team is working as a well-oiled machine. We've made lots of process improvements. I think it's time to skip the sprint retrospective on every second sprint so we have more time to focus on stories or we can accelerate our sprint delivery schedule. Don't give in to the temptations. Keep looking after every sprint for new and better ways. Keep looking for improvements. Don't ever, ever let your product owner, your business owner, your own desire to deliver more value to, to the organization ever suggest. Skipping on the sprint retrospective, as I say, it is your key process improvement area and please do keep doing it. And one of the reasons I encourage you to always apply your Scrum retrospective is it gives you the opportunity to apply Scrum incrementally. And as a result of applying Scrum incrementally, you're always doing continual process improvement. And because Scrum has so very few rules, find the Scrum principles that will work for your project for your organization. Maybe a daily sprint is going to be a challenge. Maybe a daily update to your progress charts is going to be a challenge. But find the principles of Scrum that will work in your organization and say we are Scrum-like and we're going to get better. And with that dedication, that commitment to say we are Scrum-like and we're going to get better, we'll pick the principles that work for us immediately and we'll fine-tune them first. We'll get really, really good at running an effective 15-minute daily Scrum and then we will get really, really good at running an effective sprint retrospective at the end of every sprint. And then we'll get really, really, really good at part A of our sprint plan. We'll select what we can do best first. We'll get really, really good at doing that. And then we'll select the next and the next and the next. And that applies to being Scrum. And that applies also to the Agile principles. As we'll discuss a little later in this nugget, there are many agile principles that we've discussed already through the series. Find the one or two of those agile principles that work well for your project and your organization and get really, really, really good at that. Test-driven development. Don't worry about pair programming. Don't worry about continuous integration. Don't worry about automated build servers. If you think test-driven development works very well in your project and organization, implement that agile principle first and get really, really good at doing that. And then say, okay, we've got this test-driven development down pat. What's the next one we want to pick? Let's look at pair programming. Since pair programming and test-driven development actually fit quite nicely together, we write a test, and then the other half of the pair writes the code, writes a test, and then we flip back and forth. But find something that's going to work, get really good at that, and then move on and on. And that's, again, to me, one of the keys for effective process improvement. 
Scrum takes hours to understand. Scrum takes years to master. And then once you have your Scrum working as a well-oiled machine, then I think we want to begin to focus on organizational Scrum process improvement. And to do that, I would suggest we need to do organizational retrospectives. The concept of a Scrum of Scrum retrospectives. Do not mix the Scrum, and I'm going to say team retrospective, and an organizational retrospective. Very different purposes, very different focus. The Scrum team retrospective, which is what we do at the end of every sprint, focuses on lessons from that last sprint and focus specifically on what we need to do to make our project, to make our last sprint more effective. And we've talked at length about what happens in that Scrum sprint retrospective. The same principles apply for an organizational retrospective, but an organizational retrospective is not, I'm going to say, as focused. It's more global and typically takes longer than the time we're going to allow for a sprint retrospective. But they're still important, as I say. It's the concept to me of a scrum of scrum of retrospectives. On a regular basis, maybe monthly, maybe as infrequently as quarterly, bring together key people from all of the projects. Again, probably a good representative would be the Scrum Master from all of the various Scrum projects going on in your organization. Once a month, once a quarter, for half a day or even a day, bring all of your Scrum Masters together and those Scrum Masters can use the Scrum of Scrum process to say, here's what we've learned, here's the process improvements, here's what we've done within our projects, within our Scrums, to make them more effective. Should we have organizational learning from this work? How can we make our organizational more effective? And absolutely talk to the business owners, talk to the SMEs. Typically, we don't invite the business owners and the SMEs to our sprint retrospective, but we absolutely want to talk to the business owners and the SMEs as part of our organizational retrospective because they may have some insight as to where Scrum is helping them, what challenges Scrum is causing to them, and how they think Scrum can be improved. And I would suggest query the executives. Detailed talk to the business owners and SMEs, even to the point of inviting them to the Scrum of Scrum retrospective. But if you're not going to invite them to the Scrum of Scrum retrospective, at least go out and talk to them and do a quick query of the executive. Say, overall, how happy are you with Scrum in the organization? Is it achieving what you wanted? Are you happy with your commitment to it? Do I have your continuing commitment to support Scrum? And so on identify and implement process improvement for the org is the main reason we do organizational retrospectives. And as a last thing in there, in terms of overall organizational retrospectives and overall organizational process improvements, encourage your team, encourage your Scrum Masters, encourage your product owners to go out and take a Scrum Refresher training. Go to a conference. Take, an, take the next level of certification. But continue to educate yourself. And again, I, re I repeat myself perpetually through this nugget. Scrum takes hours to understand and years to master. There's always some tidbits, so there's always some process improvements that 
no matter how many years we've been doing Scrum, that we can do uh, just a little bit more personal self-improvement or identify ways and methods that other organizations that are presenting at the conference or other organizations that you've talked to at your, your certification course, how they have done process improvements and again, how they have made their organizations more adaptive, more supportive and more user usability activities around Scrum deployment. And I've put measure results in this nugget on organizational process improvement because to me measuring results is going to give us two things directly related to organizational process improvement. It gives us a chance to prove the value and although proving value does not necessarily lead directly to organizational process improvement, proving value continues the commitment. and it eliminates the naysayers. And if you eliminate all of the people that are saying Scrum isn't good, Scrum doesn't work, Scrum doesn't add value to our organization, by simply removing that negativity within the organization, that will in and of itself result in process improvement. But the key reason I want to measure results is to identify where we fall short. So we may be going around saying Scrum is awesome. We've been doing Scrum in our organization for three years now. We're really jazzed and we're really excited. Our quality has improved. Our time to market has improved. The number of story points that we're doing per, per sprint has improved. Everything is just continually getting better. But how do we do to industry standards? Is our quality consistent with where other organizations are in terms of the quality? Does our time to market, does our, our completion ratios, are we doing Scrum as effectively as other organizations? And if we are, great. And if we aren't, where are we falling short? Do we need to improve our quality? Do we, Im is our quality less than industry standards? but our time to market consistent with industry standards and so on. So again, if we capture the metrics, understand how well we're doing in our Scrum projects, if we use the metrics from Scrum to Scrum for other projects in our organization, we can identify the weaker teams and focus on the weaker teams for process improvement. We can identify where our organization in general compares to. And again, look for areas where we can do process improvement. And as, as I said, it gives us a chance to toot our own horn. It gives us a chance to prove value. It secures that continual commitment. And hopefully over time, if we continue to prove and validate our results, we're going to eliminate the naysayers so that over time, we're going to have people saying we do scrum projects and we also do other projects. Over time, that's going to say we do most of our projects using scrum and a very few of our projects using other methods to eventually we're going to get our organization say we are a 100% scrum based organization. We embrace support and believe in scrum. So measuring the results and using those results to drive process improvements is also something very key to ensure the longevity and ongoing support for your Scrum, for Scrum in your organization. And finally, I believe we need to challenge the team to try other agile techniques. And this applies, especially if we're going with the, the baby step approach and applying Scrum incrementally, that we need to challenge the team to try other techniques. But even if we believe our team is 100% Scrum proficient, there's enough variability, there's enough other processes out there in the agile world. And we've talked about all of these already in earlier nuggets. I'm not going to, to go into the details of what each of these are. But if we're already doing test driven development and we're already doing pair programming, do we need to refocus the team and say, are we effectively doing spikes and branches? How much time and attention are we spending on cleanup stories? 
Do we have a full understanding of refactoring? And so on and so on and so on. And others. I've simply brought out in this Nugget series the most common of the Agile techniques that I would encourage you to review and understand and experiment with on your Scrum projects, but there are others. So again, if you think your team is a well-oiled, functional Scrum machine, and your team is doing literally all of the above, and your team is doing all of the above effectively, go out there and do some more research on the web. Buy two or three more reference manuals on Scrum and Agile development and look for the really exotic Agile principles. And I don't mean exotic in a, in a negative sense, but look for the ones that are really for the elite. Look for the ones that absolutely stress and challenge your teams. And as we continually challenge the team to become more agile, to be more iterative, to become more incremental, again, the adaptation and adoption of and acceptance of Scrum in your organization is going to do nothing but improve and increase. This concludes our nugget on Scrum process improvements. As we've discussed in this nugget, there are very few rules, so it's easy to be Scrum. Or even what I suggested in this nugget, it's easy to be Scrum light, like to adopt one or two of the principles of Scrum and then get better at each. As I've said several times in this nugget, Scrum is easy to understand, but takes years to master. How do we do Scrum process improvement? We stick to our sprint retrospective and we always, always do it. And we always strive to find process improvements at the end of every sprint. We apply Scrum incrementally. We do a little bit, we get good at it, and then we pick something else. The next step. Once we have our individual teams and projects working as well-oiled Scrum machines, then we begin to focus on organizational process improvements and begin to do organizational retrospectives where we improve our overall organizational Scrum health. A focus of doing overall Scrum health is continual education, refresh. We're never too old to learn new Scrum techniques. And I think it's key that we measure the results, that we prove success, and we measure projects over projects, not in terms of a competition, but in terms of identifying where some of our projects may have weaknesses so that we can do process improvement. And we measure our org against the industry to again understand where our organization may have weaknesses and where our organization can be improved based on industry standards. And we should continually challenge our team to adopt and apply new agile techniques. Once we've got the basics down, as discussed in this Nugget series, then we will look for the exotic and the elite and the very fine-tuned and professional-based agile techniques. But again, we should be always striving for process improvement to the point where everybody in the organization says we are a scrum organization and every project we deliver is based on scrum principles and that's a significant step forward for any organization as opposed to the traditional that says we develop some of our projects using scrum and some of our projects using standard process try scrum and get very better at doing scrum over the life of delivery in your organization this concludes our nugget on Scrum process improvement. I hope this module has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.